Several months ago, I did a tutorial on reversing a string. I will link to that in the description. But that tutorial brought up several questions about additional applications. We're going to look at one of those in this tutorial. Before we get started, make sure to click that bell button and subscribe and remember the discount links to all my courses in the description. Also, my website has a list of all the tutorials I've published. There are over 200 now. The description also has a link to earn script. And remember, you can use script to get access to free courses. So reversing a string is a pretty straightforward process as I show in the previous tutorial alluded to. Once again, I will link to that in the description if you want to watch it. However, the task can get more complex with certain issues. For example, diacritics in certain languages consist of more than one Unicode character. So reversing those the right way can be tricky. In the previous tutorial comments, Magnus addresses that pretty thoroughly in response to those comments. In this tutorial, we're going to deal with another question. How to reverse a string with special characters? But the special characters aren't reversed. Let's look at the input and output that is really wanted. That'll help explain what we're trying to accomplish here. So in the comments, it was asked, well, how do we take an input like this, A comma B dollar sign C, and reverse it so it's C comma B dollar sign A? Notice that the special characters, the comma and the dollar sign, stay in their exact positions. They don't get reversed. They stay wherever they are. Now, as I worked on this, I realized that this simple input and output example was a little too basic. I was able to solve that, but it didn't work with larger examples. So what I'm going to use as an input is this particular string here. So we can see a number of different special characters. And what we want to do is we want to reverse, reverse it. So all those characters stay in the same place as you can see them here, but the letters are reversed. Okay, those are all in the same place in the output. This is what it should be in the end, but the letters are reversed. Now, I'm not sure the application of this when or when you might want to do this, but even still, this is a great exercise for working with JavaScript strings. In this solution, I'm going to be using the reduce method. If you are not comfortable with that method of arrays, I recommend watching some tutorials, which I'll link to in the description. Okay, let's get started. Once again, if you come up with a different solution or a better solution, post it in the comments. It is a great opportunity for everyone to learn. Now, as I began working on this problem, I realized I could combine everything I needed to do into one function, but that would make that function too unwieldy. There, the function would be doing too much, and so I wanted to simplify it, and so I broke things out. And so I decided what I needed. I needed a function that would go through this string here and it would return to arrays. And the arrays would consist of the index positions for all the letters, just the letters, and then every other character. And I was going to use that index position to then reverse the letters and not reverse the special characters. So having that index position for both of those situations allowed me to solve it much simpler. And I realized there was no reason to put that in the same function, so I broke that out into a separate function. And so that's the function we're going to create first, is we're going to create a function that simply will return an object, and the object will have two arrays. One array are, is the index position of all the letters. The other array is the index position of the other characters. So let's go ahead and set that up. Now, this is going to be a very detailed name here. Basically, it's telling us what this function is going to give us. And it's going to receive a string. And then, like I said, it's going to return an object. All right, so since we're returning an object, we're going to start this with the return keyword. And we're going to return the results of this string. We're going to go through that string 
and we're going to create arrays of the letters and the non-letter characters. So in order to go through this string, we need to convert it to an array. And we do that like this. The spread operator will spread out all of the characters in that string. And by putting them inside an array, that will create an array. And then we can use the reduce method on that. And so here's reduce. Now, reduce is one of those higher order methods where we pass in a function. And that function is going to act on every single element of the array. In the case of this, it's every single character. It'll act on each one of those. And so we need to set up that function. Now, this function needs to accept three parameters. One is we want to accept an object. And the reason we're accepting an object is that's what we want to return when the reduce method is done. And so after every iteration, it's going to add to this object. It's going to continue to build on this object. And remember, I said I wanted to return an object that had two arrays as a part of it. One is the array of letters. The other is the array of other characters. And so that's the first parameter. And then the next parameter is each item in the array we want to deal with each one of those, A, and then comma, then B, then dollar sign, and so on. And then the third parameter is the index position of the item. So as we're dealing with the item, what index position in this array here, I should say, is that? And that will help us to put the index position into the new array that we're creating. And I'm doing an arrow function here, so we'll do the arrow. And then I'm using curly braces because I'm going to have several lines within this function. Now, before we go any farther with the reduce method, let me set up the initial object, this object here, that is going to continue to be passed back in to the reduce method every iteration. And then we add to it every iteration. So we need to set up what that object look like, looks like at the start. And it's pretty basic. So right here is where we pass that in. So the first parameter of the reduce method is the function, the callback function. The second parameter is the initializer for this right here. And here's what it's going to look at. It's an down here is where we want to do it. It's an object and it has two properties, letters. And that is an empty array. And then the second property is others. And that is also an empty array. So that's our basic object we're going to start with. And then as we iterate through this, we're going to add index positions for letters here and index position for the other characters here. So that's what we're doing. All right, now I want to get the unicoder for each one of these. And why do I want to do that? Well, the reason I want to get the unicoder is because I need to be able to find out if it's a letter or something else. And I can do that with a range in Unicode characters. And so I'm going to set up a variable here, let code equal. And the way we do that, item, remember, contains the, the element from the array. So the first time through, it'll be A, then comma, then B, and so on. So item dot char code at. That is the string method that's going to return that Unicode. All right, so now we have that. We can go ahead and find out if it's a letter or not. Now, I'm going to use the turn error operator because I think it's just cleaner when I'm doing it inside of something like the reduce method. And so here's our condition. If the code is greater than 65 and the code is less than 90, or the code is greater than 97 and the code is less than 122, that will get upper and lowercase letters. So if that is true, right here, if that is true, then what do we want to do? Well, we want to add an index position to this array right here, the letters array. So let's do that. So the object is index obj. That's the object we're dealing with. Dot letters dot push 
And what do we push on? We push index. Remember, we're passing in the index of each of these items as well. So we push that on to the letters array. Or if it's not a letter, then index obj dot others dot push. And once again, we're pushing on index. So that gives us what we need. This will, when it's all done, have built an object that has two arrays. And so we want to make sure so that this object is continued in each iteration. We want to make sure that this function here returns that object. That callback function returns the object. So that's what I'm going to do here. That's the last thing I need to do for this function. All right. So that should now return for us an object that has the index position for all of those. And let's just test this out before we move on. So I'm going to do a console log statement of that. And I'm going to pass in the string and let's see what we get. So save this. And then if I look at the console here, got something wrong with the name. Don't have agreement with the case there on the name. Save that again. Refresh. And here's our array. And so it gives us the index position of all of the letters right here. You can see it's skipping where the comma is, dollar sign is. And that's down here in this others array. So we're getting what we want with that. So now we can go ahead and build the main functions. Let me comment this out here. And let's go ahead and work on the main function. And we're going to call this function reverse only letters. Because that's all we want to do is reverse just the letters. Function, and it's going to receive a string. So we have our function set up. Now, first thing I want to do is to get the index object created in this function up here. So I'm going to declare a variable and then set that equal to index other non letters and pass the string into that function right here. And that's going to return an object that will be placed here so that we can use it as a part of this function. All right, we're going to use the reduce method again. This time, what we're going to do with the reduce method is we're going to take the string, convert it to an array like we did up here, and use reduce on that. But what we want to return is another array. And that array will have this reversed with the exception of all the other characters. So it'll look like this. All right, that will be an array. And then we'll join that array back together to get the string at the end. All right, so let's go ahead and once again, we're going to return that. So I'm putting a return here and then we're going to spread out the string, make an array out of that and then reduce. Now, once again, the first thing we pass in to reduce is a callback. And so what do I want in this? Well, up here, we used an object that we were accumulating all the data on. Well, in this case, we're going to use an array that we're going to accumulate all the data on. I'm going to call that, I'm going to use a variable rev order for that, the reverse order. And then we we'll also need the item. So as we move through each letter or character, we're going to need that item as well. Once again, arrow function. There we go. Now, one before we go any farther, Let's create our initial array for this right here, this accumulator value. And that's just going to be an empty array. That's all it is. And so I do that right there. Very simple. All right. Now, we want to do the same thing we did up here. We want to get the character code. And then we also want to test it because we want to see if it's a letter or not. So I'm just going to copy these lines up here. Just paste them in down here. All right. 
Now, if it is a letter, what are we going to do? Okay, so this is where it gets a little bit trickier. So if it is a letter, we want to reverse it. So the index position here will become this index position. This index position or this item here will be placed in this index position. This letter here will be placed in this index position and so on. So how are we going to do that? Well, if we look at what we created here, we want to get these numbers. The first letter, we want to grab this one. Second letter, this one. Third letter, this one. Now we can do that with pop. For example, if we have this array here and we pop off, what do we get? We get the last item in that array, see? So pop will give us that. So that's what we want to do here. So let me jump back here and I'm going to do rev order. I want to assign this to the rev order array, which right now, the first time through, is an empty array. And we're going to place it where? Well, we're going to place it in the index obj.letters.pop position because we're popping off this index position here. So that's where we want to replace it. And so we want to set that equal to what? The item, because we're getting each character here in the item variable, all right? So that's what we want to do if it's a letter. Now, what if it's not a letter? What if it's one of the other characters? Well, if we were to pop off of this array, it's going to give us this, which would put it in a different position. We want it to remain in the exact same position it was. So we want to grab this index. And so how do we do that? Well, we use the opposite of pop, which is shift. Shift will take it from the front of the array. So here's how we do that. Rev order. And then index obj dot others dot shift going to grab that so that's going to be where we want to put place it in the rev order array and we're going to set that equal to item just like that and then finally like we did up here we need to return our accumulator we need to return that array because we're going to continue to add to it we're going to build on it so return rev order like that all right, now the last thing we need to do, this is going to give us an array. The end result of all of this will be an array. And then we just want to use the join method to turn it into a string. We're going to join it like that, and that will create a string out of it. All right, I think we've got everything we need. Let's see how it looks. So I'm going to do a simple console log statement of the results here. We're going to, let's see, reverse only letters, yes. And we're passing in the string, this one up here, and then we're going to console log what we get out because it's going to return the end results from this function. So let's save that. And there we go. See, the comma is in the same place, the dollar sign, the asterisk, and another comma. They're all in the same place, but all the letters are reversed. That particular problem gave us a chance to try some different things with strings and arrays. So in that sense, I think it was a really good exercise and it allowed the ability to show some things that can be done here. Now, if you came up with a better solution, maybe a solution that could be done faster or, or cleaner or something like that, please post it. Let us learn from it. It's great to see those types of things. All right, please hit the like button and subscribe. And remember the discount links to all my courses in the description section. Click the bell button to be notified about new releases. I release a new tutorial almost every week. And thanks for watching.